All right, guys, welcome back to Underground Science. And in this video, we'll, we'll be talking about intracellular erythrocyte reactions. All right, so pretty much an erythrocyte is another name for a red blood cell. All right, so when I say intracellular reactions in an erythrocyte, we're going to be talking about, we're going to try to build up to um, the Bohr effect and the Haldane effect, all right, when we're talking about uh, carbon dioxide, oxygen, and red blood cells. All right, so let's go and get started. So let's say we have a huge red blood cell here. All right, so let's say this is a red blood cell and it's floating in the plasma, right? I mean, it's traveling the plasma and let's say we're working out, right? And we have a uh, muscle cell or something, right? Right here, right? We're running or doing something and we have a muscle cell right here. All right, so we have a muscle cell right here. Remember, muscle cells are multinucleated. All right. So if we have a muscle cell, I'm going to label this out. So this is a muscle cell. All right. So let's say we have a red blood cell traveling around and it reaches near the muscle cell, right? And this is the red blood cell is right now, let's say in a capillary. All right. So in an arterial or a capillary. Okay. So we're going to say red blood cell in capillary. Okay, so that means it's oxygenated right now. It's trying to deliver oxygen. So what's going to happen? Uh, the basic mechanism that we have to look, there's actually going to be some chemistry involved, and this will help us understand the Bohr and Haldane effect later, That we when we talk about it later, okay? So what's going to happen is we have hemoglobin, right, inside a red blood cell. So let's go and draw that out. So we have <clears throat> a hemoglobin, and each hemoglobin, so let me go and draw a huge hemoglobin here and in each hemoglobin we're gonna have um four compartments to it all right so we're gonna have four chains to it and we're gonna have two alpha chains and two beta chains right about 140 around 140 amino acids each chain all right and each ch each uh chain in the um hemoglobin each of the four chains is gonna have a heme group an iron heme group all right, so we're going to have a iron heme group in each of the four chains, and this is where the oxygen is going to be bound to, all right? So this is where the oxygen will be bound to in the red blood cell as it's traveling down the capillary, all right? So, and right here, I just drew one hemoglobin, but we have to realize that in one red blood cell, we have millions of hemoglobin molecules, right? Around like 270 million hemoglobin molecules, and each hemoglobin molecule holds four atoms of oxygen, right? Four molecules of oxygen in each heme group in each of its globin chains. So so that's how um, oxygen is bounded to, right? And so this, the, the main way that oxygen is carried in a capillary inside a red blood cell is through the form of oxyhemoglobin. All right, so let me go and write that down. So it's called oxyhemoglobin. And let's look at why. What what is oxyhemoglobin? So when oxygen is bound to the hemoglobin, right, especially inside the four iron heme groups inside each of the globin chains in the hemoglobin. So let me go and write this down. This is our hemoglobin, the whole circle. All right, so that's our hemoglobin. So when oxygen is bound here, we re we refer to that as oxyhemoglobin. Okay, so let's go and write that down. So the way you write down oxyhemoglobin. Is like this so it's HB is you represent hemoglobin and then oxygen right by it, all right so our O2 diatomic oxygen this is oxyhemoglobin right here all right so this is how you write our oxyhemoglobin this is the main way oxygen is carried throughout the throughout our capillaries right through our blood in our red blood cells through oxyhemoglobin and note that there is some oxygen so remember this traveling in a capillary right this whole red blood cell so note that we do have plasma here, right? We do have a bunch of plasma here, and in the plasma, we do have little amounts of oxygen dissolved, okay, in the plasma. So we do have this form of oxygen that's being carried. Is Some oxygen is dissolved in the plasma, but most of the oxygen that's being carried to the tissues is via oxyhemoglobin, all right, in our red blood cells. Oxygen that's bound to hemoglobin, which is oxyhemoglobin. So here's what happens when it gets to the muscle cell, right? At that moment, our muscle cell is creating a lot of CO2 and it needs oxygen because it's becoming oxygen depleted. So what's going to happen is 
because this this is in a capillary, this whole red blood cell is in the capillary, right? It's going to have a high oxygen saturation on the hemoglobin rather than um, a low oxygen saturation, all right? So what that's going to mean is that we're going to have a higher concentration of carbon dioxide in the muscle cell, a lower car con concentration of carbon dioxide in the red blood cell. So we know that usually we have molecules that flow from high to low concentration, right? So we have a bunch of CO2 getting made here. And so we don't have much CO2 in this red blood cell, right? Because it's coming from the heart and from the lungs. And so what's going to happen is that we're going to see CO2 dissolve into the plasma and into the red blood cell. Okay, so we're going to see the CO2 dissolve into the plasma, into the red blood cell from the muscle cell. So we're going to have a bunch of CO2 here now. And because we had a high concentration of oxygen inside the red blood cell and a low concentration of oxygen inside the muscle cell, oxygen is going to go from high to low concentration also. Okay, but we have to look at how though, because if we see this oxygen won't just leave and then leave out of the red blood cell, it's actually going to be reacting with carbon dioxide and hydrogen cations also. So let's see how. So CO2 comes in, right? It diffuses in into our plasma and into our red blood cell from high to low concentration from our muscle cell to our red blood cell. Now what happens is our oxyhemoglobin, again, that's oxygen that's already bounded to our hemoglobin, right? So let me go and write it down like this to make, it, to make more uh, sense of it oxyhemoglobin is going to get competition now because now CO2 wants to bind to the hemoglobin also. So it's going to start getting competition to oxyhemoglobin is. So what that's going to cause is that oxygen is going to slowly start to get kicked off, right? It's going to start getting kicked off from the hemoglobin. How's that going to happen? Because of the competition that the CO2 is going to, is going to um, provide, all right? So let's go and see how that works. So uh, let's see. Let's go and erase this. Okay, and let's go and drag it down here so we can have more space. So we have our oxyhemoglobin right here. Now a bunch of CO2 is coming in, so the CO2 will actually compete with the oxyhemoglobin because the CO2 is like, you know, I need I need to bind on the hemoglobin. So the CO2 wants to bind, so it wants to compete and bind to hemoglobin. All right, inside the red blood cell. So that's why it's going to compete with the oxyhemoglobin, the oxygen bind to the hemoglobin, and look what that results in. We're going to get success, we're going to be successful in that, resulting in carb amino hemoglobin, right, which is carbon dioxide binded to hemoglobin. And we're going to get a hydrogen cation as a result of it, and we're going to get our oxygen booted off. All right, it's going to get booted off, and this oxygen will then do what? It's going to go down here, right? It's going to go down here and enter the muscle cell, and the muscle cell can use that to make ATP, all right, in cellular respiration. So that's what's going to happen. So see how we just booted off an oxygen via the competition of oxyhemoglobin CO2? Look what we look what else we made. H+, plus, right? We made a hydrogen cation. What will that do? Well, the H+, plus guys, will actually, it's going to be pretty cool, is that nothing is for no use here, right? H plus will come here, and H plus will then compete with the oxyhemoglobin. So everything's trying to, like, at the end, just kick oxygen from the party, all right? That's our main goal here. Okay, so we're now our H plus cation will react with the oxyhemoglobin, kicking off the oxyhemoglobin, and making our H plus attached to our hemoglobin. And where does the oxygen go? Gets kicked off. <clears throat> And this oxygen then goes to the muscle cell. All right. So that's the second way. That's the second reaction in our erythrocyte in terms of carbon dioxide and oxygen. What else happens? We have all the CO2, right? Well, we also have some water in our red blood cell. So let's see what happens there. CO2 joins with water and makes what? Carbonic acid, right? So let's go and write that down. It makes carbonic acid. All right, well, now it can't just make carbonic acid, right? We need an enzyme to do that. So what enzyme drives this step from CO2 to H2O, combining and making carbonic acid, what's going to be called carbonic <clears throat> anhydrase. All right, and this carbonic acid will then dissociate into our bicarb, right, our bicarbonate anion, 
so our HCO3 minus, and our hydrogen proton. All right, and now what that's going to do is our bicarb will most likely go ahead and um, dissolve into the plasma. All right, so our bicarb is chilling in the plasma. It's going to come in later use, where we'll see near the lungs. All right, and then our H plus will again follow this reaction. It's going to compete with oxyhemoglobin, kicking off even more oxygen. We're trying to boot as much oxygen as we can off of the hemoglobin because for our reason, right? We need our muscle cells to have oxygen. So it's going to follow this reaction again, makes boot some oxygen off the oxyhemoglobin, and um, send the oxygen down to the muscle cell. All right, so th these are the main um, reactions that I wanted to talk about in this video. And note that a bicarb is actually the main way of carrying CO2 inside the blood plasma, right? So this is the main way of carrying, right, carrying CO2 throughout the blood plasma. We'll see how when we get to the lungs, because in the next video, we'll make a part two to this, we'll see how it's the main way of carrying um, CO2. The other main way, of course, we saw here with carbaminohemoglobin. Carbon, this is when carbon dioxide is bound to hemoglobin. That's the other main way of our blood, red blood cells carrying carbon dioxide back to the lungs. All right, so we have one way here of carrying carbon dioxide back to the lungs. We have one, our main way here, the bicarb way, right? And we'll see how that works later on when we get to the lungs. And we have our third way, again, that some CO2 can be dissolved in our plasma and be carried back to the lungs. All right. So that's it, guys. I, I hope this video made sense to you guys. These are the basic intracellular erythrocyte reactions that I wanted to get through. And talking more about this, we'll make a part two video, see what happens when we get to the lungs. And, and then we'll start talking about the Bohr effect and the Haldane effect. All right. So hopefully this video made sense to you guys. Make sure to tune into my future videos by um, clicking that notification bell. Don't, don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, see you guys later. And stay safe, all right? I'll be making more cool topics about bio, biochem, chem, and physics in the future. All right, so see you guys again, and stay safe.